Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. It is a blessing to come before you once again. I give all honor, glory, and praise unto the Most High, the Lord God of Israel. So today, brothers and sisters, we are going to read the book of Job, Job chapter 38. And from chapter 38 all the way to the end of this book of Job, you'll see that it is the Most High who is speaking to Job directly. In the previous chapters, going all the way back to the beginning, you would have Job's wife speak to him, his three friends, and then Elihu, who was the young man, the bystander, even speaking to Job. Now the Most High will speak to Job directly. And as I've said in the previous video, God has the final say. You know, man, they can tell you their opinions, what they think, but at the end of it all, God has the final say. So let us read um, Job chapter 38. Make sure you do have your Bibles out, a pen and paper. That way you can follow along and take notes. And so Job chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job. So you understand who it is that's speaking. His creator, his maker himself is now answering Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. And so... Um, I do have a few reference scriptures to take you to. I first want us to turn to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 19, to see that the Most High did speak to our ancestors of old. So turn to the book of Exodus chapter 19, and we are going to read verses 14 through 16 in Exodus chapter 19. And it reads, And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day, in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And now let's turn to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Again, I'm just taking you to some scriptures to show you how the Most High spoke to our ancestors of old. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, we're going to read verse 22. And verse 24, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 24. And it reads, These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that you came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And verse 24, And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice, out of the midst of the fire, we have seen this day that God does talk with man and he liveth. No other nation can say this, that they heard the voice of God and did live, meaning they lived to tell that they heard God's voice. He didn't kill them right then. So understand, no other nation can claim this. What an honor, what a blessing. And just as God spoke to our ancestors of old, God is now speaking to Job. And it says in Job chapter 38, 
how he's speaking to him in verse one, out of the whirlwind. Okay, so understand when the Most High did appear and did speak to our ancestors of old, you know, he hid himself because our God is so holy, so righteous, okay? And so I want us to also turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, again, still looking at how God had spoken to our ancestors of old. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 Kings chapter 19, and it does matter because you have too many uh, false teachers, false preachers who will tell you, you know, God spoke to them or he came to them, you know, and said this, that, or the other, and you can't find it written in the word of God. Whatever the most high does speak to you, it will already be written. God has already spoken. So you can read it out of this word of God. That's how you know if it's truly God speaking to you. So 1 Kings chapter 19, I'm going to read verse 1 through 4 and 9 through 12. And this is with um, Elijah when he was on the run from Jezebel, that wicked woman. So 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 through 4, and then 9 through 12. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with oh, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them, by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Again, I am in 1 Kings chapter 19. We're going to read 9 through 12, just showing you how the Most High will speak unto man. Okay, so 9 through 12 now in 1 Kings chapter 19. And he came there unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And this is an angel appearing before Elijah, speaking on God's behalf. And verse 10, And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left and they seek my life to take it away. Verse 11, again in 1 Kings chapter 19, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, here it is, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind, kind of like that whirlwind we read in Job chapter 38, right? Verse one says, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. So here we have Elijah and the Most High is passing by. And it says here in 1 Kings chapter 19 and 11, and a great strong wind rent or tore the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Okay, and you can go on and finish reading that entire uh, story regarding Elijah um, and how he was fleeing from Jezebel. But you see how the Most High will speak unto man, okay? 
And many of our people, unfortunately, they don't have faith to believe in God, let alone to believe that it's God who's speaking to them. Okay, but in this word of God, we know God is speaking to us directly through his word. So going back to Job chapter 38, again, those were just some examples I wanted to show you of how God will speak to man. And so now um, we'll read verse three again. This is what the Most High says to Job in Job chapter 38, verse three. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. You see, God does not have to answer to no one, but we are his creation. So we must answer to God, our maker. Verse four, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. So if you're so wise, Job, tell me, where were you when this earth was formed and created? You see how the Most High is now challenging Job. And so um, he's going to, uh, to ask Job some questions and demand that Job give him a response. Okay? And remember in previous chapters that Job would say, Oh, that the Most High would speak to me. Uh, let's turn to Job chapter 31 and 35. Because God does answer prayers. God hears our words. Job chapter 31 and verse 35. This was Job speaking in previous chapters. He says, oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire or my request, my prayer, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me and that my adversary had written a book. Okay, so now God is speaking to Job. But God does not have to answer to man. Man must answer to God. So, um... Verse four again says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it if you have understanding. And you can go back to Genesis uh, chapter one, chapter two, and see all of God's creation, right? Even going into Genesis chapter three and understand that before man, there was God speaking, saying, let there be. There was God and God, two in the Godhead, and he was saying, let there be, and there was. You see, before man, you had the sun, you had the moon, right? You had the animals, the seas, all of these things came before man did. Then God put man in it, okay? So now Proverbs chapter 8, I want us to read... Um, Proverbs chapter 8, because man has forgotten who God is, and they must be reminded that we are his creation. He is our maker, not the other way around. Proverbs chapter 8, we're going to read 22 through 31. And Proverbs chapter 8, 22 through 31. And it says, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no foundations abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. 
as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. So understand, this is the Messiah this is speaking of, um, Jehovah, before he would come in the flesh. There was God and God. So where was Job when all things were created? Where were you? Where was I when God said, let there be? You see, we are not to challenge God. We are not to think of ourselves more than what we are, but of the dirt, the dirt, the dust of the earth. So um, let's go also to Hebrews chapter one, and we will read one through three. Turn to Hebrews chapter one. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3 in Hebrews chapter 1. And it says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So again, the question remains, where was Job? when the foundations of the earth were being laid. Okay. Let's go to now Psalms chapter 102 and verse 25. Turn to Psalms chapter 102 and verse 25. Psalms 102 and verse 25. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Okay. So where was Job when the foundations of the earth were made? Where were you? Where was I? You see, we are God's creation. He is our maker, not the other way around. And man today seems to think that they themselves are gods. No, not so. Verse 5, again, we're back in Job chapter 38, verse 5. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if you know, or who stretched the line upon it? Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And these sons of God we did read in Job chapter 2 and verse 1. So these sons of God we know are the angels. So when these morning stars being the angels sang together or all of the sons of God again being angels when they shouted for joy where was Job you see and again you can go back and read Job chapter 2 and 1 I won't turn there um, but I do believe that these are the angels of God all of his creation we're, we're seeing was made when you read the book of Genesis, going back to the beginning. Genesis means beginnings. You know, it were men who were then formed after you had the trees, after you had the plants, after you had the seas, the sun, the moon, the stars. After all of that, then man breathed into, um, God breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And it was God who put man into the garden. You see? 
So I understand that God is in control of it all, including you and I. And verse 8, again, we're in Job chapter 38. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? You know, God determined that the seas, just exactly where they would be placed on this earth, he determined when those waves are roaring, you know, flowing back and forth, that they cannot pass a certain limit unless he gives that command. This is a mighty, powerful God we serve. Verse 9, when I made the cloud the garment thereof and the thick darkness a swaddling band for it. And verse 10, and break up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors and said, hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. And here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Again, God holds back those um, waves of the sea. And he can also release those waves of the sea and cause there to be some flooding, cause there to be some destructive storms. And so um, verse 12, again, we're in Job chapter 38. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days? and cause the day spring to know his place. So again, God decides when that sun will rise, when it will go down, when it will set. Verse 13, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked might be shaken out of it. It is turned as clay to the seal and they stand as a garment just looking at all of God's creation and what he's capable of doing with these things he's created. He can use them to destroy the wicked, which we read that the day will come that shall burn as an oven. So we know God's going to bring some destruction to this earth using his creation. I can read in this Bible where there's going to be hail falling, you know, all these things. So it's best we serve God now while we have breath in our body to do so. Um, I do want us to, to turn to um, Proverbs chapter 8. We're going to read 24 and 28. Turn to Proverbs chapter 8. And we're going to read 24 and 28. So Proverbs chapter 8, uh, 24 and 28. You see, brothers and sisters, I can't break every single thing down. You know, I pray for understanding, and it is the Most High who gives us all understanding. But what I can do is take the time and labor and love just to be able to read the Word of God and share that which the Most High might have revealed to me what little understanding I have. I can do that out of love, you see. It's not always about how much you know, how much knowledge you might have, because the Word of God says that knowledge puffeth up. It makes you prideful, boastful, right? But love, brothers and sisters, is what really counts, is what really matters, and that's what I do each time you know, recording these videos, I'm showing love to my brothers and sisters. I'm trying to get you to see how important it is to serve God while you still have breath in your body because no day is promised to any one of us. So Proverbs chapter 8, we're going to read verse 24 and 28. And it says, When there were no depths, I was brought forth when there were no foundations abounding with water. And verse 28, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. And we'll read um, 29 and 30 also. We're in Proverbs chapter 8, 29 and 30. 
when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. And I feel like we did read this already, but it doesn't hurt to read it again so you understand this same God you're reading about here and what they call the Old Testament. It was the same God who spoke to the seas in the New Testament. The same God who said, peace be still to those raging waters. Okay, that's what I wanted you to see. And so we've not dealt with the Father, but only the Son, only Jesus, who was Jehovah, who came in his Father's name. It was that same God. So now um, let's go back to Job chapter 38. I will read verse 15 again. And from the wicked, their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? So here's another question the Most High is asking Job. Have you entered into the springs of the sea? Or have you walked in the search of the depth of the deep? Okay, so I can read that Jesus had walked on water. I can also read that he called Peter to walk on the water, just as he did. You must have faith and belief in God and then have faith and belief that he can, that I can with the help of God. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You must have that kind of faith. But he asked Job, where were you or have you? Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Have the gates of death been open unto you? Another question. Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of the death? Verse 18. You see, God, he sees in both light and darkness. He knows what is in all things that are, um, that are on this earth, all things that are in and below the earth, Everything, all things, our God knows. But has Job known these things? Have you known these things? You see, that's the question that's being asked. God is reminding Job, I am your creator. You are my creation. Verse 18, has thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare it if you know it all. So all these teachers and professors who proclaim that they know all about earth, right? Let them declare it and proclaim it unto the Most High. They cannot. But to us, they're able to deceive those who don't have the understanding of the Word of God. So if you don't want to be deceived, if you don't want to be lied to, you must read the Word of God. Read about your maker, your creator, and how he operates. Uh, let's also turn to Psalms chapter 9 and verse 13. I have that one written down. Uh, Psalms chapter 9 and verse 13. And it says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me, thou that lifts me up from the gates of the death, from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Okay, and I have that one written down. Um, when we were speaking concerning the gates of death, okay? Only God can bring a person back to life again, can speak life to them. You see, 
you can go to the doctor's office and they tell you, you got six months to live, right? As a saint, but then you pray to God as we can read, um, I believe it was King Hezekiah that prayed to God and God added more years unto his life. You see, God has the final say in everything. Uh, let's read verse 19. Again, it says, Where's the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where's the place thereof? That thou should take it to the bound thereof, and that thou should know the paths to the house thereof. Verse 21, Knowest thou it? Do you know these things, Job? Because thou was then born, were you born at that time? Or because the number of thy years is great, are you the ancient of days, Job? That answer is no, no and no. You see, with man, a lot of people will look at their age to determine their wisdom. And we spoke about this in previous chapters when Elihu came on the scene and showed those men what he knew, right? A lot of people will boast about their ages as if that makes them so great. But ask them, are you the ancient of days? Do you know all things? Verse 22, has thou entered into the treasures of snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail? More questions asked to Job. Can he answer these questions? Verse 23, which I have reserved against the time of trouble against the day of battle and war. You see, God can use his creation, these things, such as the snow and the hail, to bring some trouble to this earth. And we saw that hail was brought back in the days of Egypt. The book of Revelation also speaks of some hail that will be brought in the last of the days, the end of time. I can also read about some fire again, that the days will come that shall burn as an oven. Verse 24, by what way is the light parted, which scatters the east wind upon the earth? Who has divided a water course for the overflowing of waters or a way for the lightning of thunder to cause it to rain on the earth where no man is on the wilderness wherein there is no man, to satisfy the desolate and waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth. Has the rain a father, or who has begotten the drops of dew? Verse 29, out of whom's, whose womb came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven? Who has gendered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pilates or loose the bands of Orion? And, you know, I mentioned too in another a video when these names were brought up um, that God can name his creation if he chooses to do so. Okay, and um, I think you can read back Job chapter 9 and 9 in Amos chapter 5 and 8. Um, these names were also spoken of and some to believe them to be as uh, stars, like names for stars. But again, it's God who can name his creation if he chooses to do so. Verse 32, canst thou bring forth Mazaroth in his season, another name for his creation. But is, is Job able to bring forth Mazaroth in his season? Can Job bring forth God's creation? That answer is no. And that settles all arguments of who is Pilates, Orion, Mazaroth. You know, you have many people just going crazy trying to figure these things out. 
but it's God who will give you understanding. If he wants you to know, he'll make it known to you. What I can sit here and tell you honestly and truthfully, it's God's creation and he named it. That I can say. Or canst thou guide Octorus with his sons? Verse 33, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of waters may cover thee? Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, here we are. You see, God's creation answers to him. God's creation answers to God. Again, all of God's creation answers to God. We do well to know who it is we serve and repent of all our evil doings, knowing we are his creation and we too must answer to God. Verse 36, who has put wisdom in the inward parts or who has given understanding to the heart being to your mind? Who can number the clouds in wisdom? Can you count every single cloud outside? Or who can stay the bottles of heaven when the dust grows into hardness and the clouds, clouds cleave fast together? Will thou hunt the prey for the lion? Will you provide to these lion their food? God does. Can you do it? Or feel the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens and abide in the covert in lie and wait? Who provides for the raven his food? Can you go out and provide for these birds their food? You see many... Uh, men, they create all these things, right? A bird feeder and they hang it up and all the birds come to it. Well, what happens when it's empty? Then you've got to refill it, right? Are you actually really supplying the food for the birds? No, perhaps temporarily a snack, but that's about it. And some might laugh at that statement, but brothers and sisters, we got to understand who it is that's in control of all this. Man is trying to invent so many things outside of God to try to outdo, outperform their God. You never can, you never will be able to, no matter what you try to come up with. At the end of it all, it's God who's providing the raven his food, the lions his food, us our food. We're given so much credit unto man. You know, the farmers, right? Who are growing the food, the grocery store workers who are selling the food, all these things. But what about God? If it were not for his rains, if it were not for his ground, his soil, this earth, we wouldn't have nothing at all. We are nothing without God. Verse 41, who provides the raven his food when his young ones cry unto God? They wonder for lack of meat. And that was the end of Job chapter 38. Uh, brothers and sisters, I do thank you for your time. And I hope, you know, that something was said that we can really meditate on and actually sit back and think, you know, Give thanks, give praise unto the Most High, for he has supplied all these things unto us. We did not do it ourselves, even waking up this morning. God allowed us to get up out of bed, to get dressed, to keep us in our right minds. We have to be thankful unto God. We have to acknowledge God in all things. And God is reminding Job here, I am that I am. You see, 
He's reminding Job, you are nothing without me. And we need to understand this, brothers and sisters. And thank you for your time today. God bless. Shalom.